Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, we've got another first impression of a very expensive niche house. I've been working my way through the sample set called Spirit of Dubai. And the fragrance we're talking about today is a fragrance called Majalis. M-A-J-A-L-I-S. Majalis. And um, Majalis is um, a perfume that I've been very taken with today while I've been wearing it. Extremely taken with. Here's how you smell the, um, here's how you spell the name. There's the little decant. Thanks to my perfume fairy godfather for this. Um, and, you know, if you've been following along with my early impressions on this house, okay, so you know that I've been a little rough on this house as far as you know their samples the first one i tried was their oud fragrance and i really liked it and i thought it was definitely full bottle worthy but in the situation i'm in right now with my collection and everything i have i didn't think spending twelve hundred dollars on a on a bottle of their oud was just justifiable i just didn't um, i would love to have that one though that was the best one of the bunch is what i said and then i kept trying the other compositions not just the oud, but I tried, you know, the other compositions that they had in, and this is all, by the way, in the first collection, okay? They now have a second collection, which is supposed to be even better, but I've never tried any of the second collection. So, oh God. So this is all the first collection. And, um, you know, I went through some of the offerings that they have for sale, for example, in their first collection, some of the other ones that I've done first impression on were things like uh, Fahama, Maidan, Abraj, um, you know, stuff like that. And they never really moved me. I always thought that they smelled a little bit cheap. Uh, I always thought that they smelled a little bit... Um, they just didn't live up to the high price tag that Spirit of Dubai is asking for. You know, they're asking big money for these perfumes. And when I smelled them, I thought that the oud used was a step down. The ingredients, while it did smell nice, it, it just didn't, it didn't do it for me. It didn't move me in a way. This one absolutely does. This is the hands down the winner of the, um, as far as the other compositions, not just the oud one. I still love the, just their oud. Um, you know, it, it, for me, I could wear Frederick Malls the night. I could wear Spirit of Dubai's oud and I would get the same level of satisfaction since I already have a decant of the night. Uh, you know, I just wouldn't go out and spend that kind of money, but this is full bottle worthy to me. In fact, if I, I'll just put it out there right now, if I ever saw a bottle of this on discounters at Joma Shop or CanadaBuy.ca and I was doing a haul, this is one I would buy because, oh God, it is, um, well, let's, before I give you what it reminds me of, and, and you're going to get some personal information here about me because I have said I was born uh, in, I'm, I'm half Arabic, I was born in the Middle East before on this channel. That's not a secret, but this is the only one that's ever just transported me back to, you know, the time that I spent in Jordan. And um, before I tell you the stories and everything and what it reminds me of, let's go through what the brand says it is. So I'm going to read you a little blurb, and then we're going to read the scroll that opens up, and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. So it says, the mingling fragrances of Hedi Kawa. And kawa is um, Arabic coffee, okay? Uh, kawa and dates mixed with heavenly royal pure rose taif. Cardamom musk brings to life the rich and full-bodied scent of Dubai Majalis. Rich like the feel of a Persian rug. And the bottle has this, you know, almost like this Persian rug on the front that you, that you are, you know, that, that shows the Arabic style room setting and the rug on the on the bottle is actually supposedly the detail of a real rug. Um, the walls are textured of the little room and so you know I would love to I'd love to you know hold the bottle and see that one day. 
Um, rich like the feel of a Persian rug and intricate patterns, Dubai Majalis is the flying carpet to take you on a sensory journey of Arabic Arabian hospitality. A truly unique and breathtaking fragrance. Okay, let's read the scroll first before we get into it. My God, it's so beautiful. Um, okay, so the first thing, the scroll, the scroll here it is, uh, of Mijalis. And let's read it. So it says, As we watched the sun setting on the horizon, it was time to reminisce in all the marvel we had experienced through our eyes. Hand in hand, we, tra we, tra we traversed until we caught sight of what appeared to be an oasis, a place of resting, gathering, leisure, and boundless joy. Is this magic? I asked. She smiled. Her lips uttered, Majalis, the spirit of Dubai, as we stepped in, in the ethereal scent of frankincense and rose, Bachor, wafted through the air, she welcomed me to join her on the lush Persian carpets, which extended into eternity. Um, we immersed ourselves in the aroma of kawa and dates, the comfort of which almost blanketed us. Joined by comrades in this magical oasis, Majalis offered a haven to rejoice and celebrate warm memories in an Arabian ambiance. The mingling fragrances of hedikawa and dates mixed with heavenly frankincense, cardamom, and royal rose incense bring to life the rich and full-bodied scent of Majalis. Rich like the feel of a Persian rug and intricate patterns, Majalis is the flying carpet of magic and fragrance already to unfurl at your feet. Okay, so let's do the note listing, the note tree, and then I'll give you my two cents on this. This is going to be a little bit of a personal journey. Other people may not feel as strongly about this fragrance, uh, especially if you have never been to the Middle East and you've never experienced some of the things that we're going to talk about. But, I mean, for me, this was... This transported me like, you know, no fragrance has, no Middle Eastern fragrance has ever transported me back to my time in Jordan the way that this one has. I'll tell you that right now. So even though I have been extremely rough on the other creations, there is a gem. There is a gem. Um, the Oud and Majalis are the two gems. I think there's still one or two more that didn't spray. I'll have to, you know, figure out the sprayers on that before I can do my first impressions. But um, this is this is a gem. So here's the note tree. Here's the note listing. In the top, it's bergamot, orange, damask rose, elemi resin, frankincense, peach, apple rose, taif rose, geranium, osmanthus, uh, cardamom. In the heart, you get sandalwood, vetiver, benzoin, coriander, ginger, saffron, powdery notes, clove, guyac wood, and dates. Date. Um, in the base, patchouli, oud, leather, vanilla, benzoin, sandalwood, myrrh, musk, honey, and Arabian coffee. Kawa. Okay? Now, when you first spray, you're instantly going to notice that this is an oriental fragrance, through and through. You can get it in the base. Um... But you will also notice that there's something animalic and dirty in the front. And if you know my taste, you know that I, I need a little bit of that to keep me interested. I need a little bit of uh, challenge in a fragrance. And this one has it. Uh, Majalis has it. When you first spray, you are hit with this Oriental Accord. Absolutely, you get a little bit of the benzoin. You get that Oriental vibe right up front. Uh, but then something steps in front of it. And what steps in front of it, and what you will notice for the first 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, is that oud, okay? That a little bit funky, a little bit dirty, the best quality oud of all the compositions that I've smelled outside of just the one that they call oud. So, um, and I was like, wow, okay, so the oud is 11, 1200 bucks. That's the expensive one. These compositions are all three, four. 50 or whatever for 50 ml, 425 or 450 for 100 ml. Um, and I, and you, if you watch my other videos, you'll notice that I basically said that I thought they were cheapening out on ingredients, right? And um, 
Here, I instantly thought, wow, this is the best quality oud of any of the actual compositions that they've created. The oud in here will remind you of the oud that you would smell in something like Promise by Frederick Mall, or something like The Moon by Frederick Mall. That's the type of oud. Now, if you're compared to Frederick Mall, you are um, doing something correct because in my view Frederick Mall is one of the best niche houses around and if you're being compared to Frederick Mall even though you know these Arabic line may not be Frederick Mall's specialty I wore Rose and Queer to Bed by Frederick Mall last night and it was absolutely stunning um, you know Frederick Mall is an amazing house and you know when you're being compared to a house like Frederick Mall to me I think they're doing something right some of the other creations I mentioned, you could compare it to Latafa, Rasasi. This one, you compare to Frederick Mall. This is much higher quality. And then I looked at the price, and it hit me that instantly they did use better ingredients in this one because this is not $425 for 100 ml. This is $715 for 100 ml. So we are now priced. Here's the oud. Here's all the other compositions I reviewed, Maidan and, you know, all that other stuff, Abraj. Here's Majalis. It's in the middle. It's not as high as the Oud, but it's higher price than Maidan and Mejalis and, and, and sorry, Maidan and um, Abraj and stuff like that. This one's higher priced. And so I think they are using better ingredients here. And I could tell, instantly I could tell. So um, I've been a little hard. Obviously, I thought the brand cut corners. I was a little hard on them based on the quality of ingredients. I'm instantly impressed with the quality of ingredients here. They feel high quality and not just the oud, everything else. The incense actually reminded me of the incense that you'll get in Dawn, Frederick Mall's Dawn, which is also a very expensive fragrance. Um, yeah, you'll, you'll, you, you'll notice that the, the incense feels very high quality. Dawn has one of the highest quality incenses I've ever smelled. And um, this also feels, you know, similar to that as far as relation quality of the ingredients goes. I'm not talking smell. Uh, there is a little bit at the end of the fragrance, once it dries down, once we go through everything, I'll tell you, um, you know, it does share maybe a very slight resemblance to the way that the moon might remind you of uh, smoking a hookah, like a raspberry hookah, if you will. Um, there's a, that incense in the dry down of Majal, Majalis, sorry, will remind you a little bit of, you know, having a hookah after a big Arabic meal, but, but let me go try to go through the scent first. Um, and the thing that I loved about the composition, so, uh, as it continues to dry down, you start to get this lemony, beautiful wet rose start to come in, this picture perfect, almost like photorealistic snapshot of a taif rose. Lemony, uh, a little bit powdery, but absolutely stunning. And that rose mixes with things like the, like the cardamom. Um, it mixes, the fruity notes come start to play a role. You get some of the peach and you get some of the um, apple. Uh, there's elemi, so you get that lemony bright uh, feeling of LME. It's not as dark as the heavy frankincense, uh, which does come into the fragrance and play a role as well. But there's so many moving parts to this and it's absolutely stunning. So the thing that just, you know, really caught my attention is a couple things. Number one, this composition uses honey. And if you've watched any of my fragrance reviews or any of my lists, you know that honey is one of my favorite notes of all time. Uh, I did my cheapy list yesterday, so now we're doing the uncheapy list. This is $715 for 100 ml, the exact opposite of a cheapy list. But towards the top of the cheapy list, the ones that I loved the best as far as best value for money, I put Boss Number 1, which is a honey tobacco composition, and I put Lapidus Porom uh, towards the top as well which is a very complex fragrance, but it also uses a note of honey and animalic notes, among other things. Um, and I love the note of honey. I love what it does in a composition, maybe because my father's signature scent was Paco Rabanne Porom. 
and there is a little bit of that honey you know in the dry down in Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. I don't know why I love honey so much but I do and it's here and it's done beautifully. The honey here um you know it'll it'll it's it's thick without being too heavy if that makes sense. It's syrupy without being sweet. So um the honey is one of the first things that, that I kind of noticed. <clears throat> but then what hit me was that coffee, that Arabian coffee. And, you know, I did make some notes here. So there's that, they call it Kawa, um, Q-A-H-W-A, which is that traditional Arabic coffee. If you've ever seen it, it's served with a small cup. And the reason it's a small cup is because uh, Arabic coffee is still a, a diuretic, if you will, so it will make you go to the bathroom. And when you're in the desert, you don't necessarily want to drink a 20 ounce, you know, cup of coffee from Starbucks or QT or wherever you get your coffee from. I mean, you'd be pissing out all your all of your fluids, and you're in a desert, right? It's it's hot as heck out there. So they drink it in very small quantities, but because of the fact that there's cardamom and other things in there, Arabic coffee is usually very heavy on the cardamom. Um, you know, it is, it, it serves also as a way to kind of keep you hydrated. And one of the reasons that this fragrance just instantly connected with me so strongly is it brought me back. You know, I was born in Jordan. Okay. When I was one years old, we came to the U S so I never learned Arabic, which is one of the biggest regrets of my life. I wish I would have learned it. Um, but what ended up happening was we went back for, for holiday one, once it's very expensive to go and, you know, both of my parents worked, it's hard to get away, that kind of thing. So when I was about 11, 11 or 12, we went back and we stayed for a long time, almost two months, like a month and a half, you know, and we were there, we did all kind of things. We went to Petra, we went to the Dead Sea. Uh, which Petra is one of the one of the seven wonders of the world. It's absolutely stunning if you've never seen Petra. But you know what really stuck with me were the different values in the Middle East. And as an American, what I mean is, you go to a hotel. We whenever we went to a hotel over there, um, we went to this hotel. It was kind of secluded up in the mountains and away from things. It was really beautiful. Uh, but whenever you walk in, there's a man waiting outside of the door where you walk into the lobby of the hotel and he is sitting there serving Arabic coffee to you. So think about the level of warmth that that displays from a cultural basis. You know, in the United States you, or Europe, you walk into a hotel, you walk in, people may smile and say hi. For some reason, having a cup of coffee um, is a different level of service and connection at least to my mind it's just a little something different it's almost like you're having coffee with a friend you know what i mean and this is this guy's job he he um they don't charge you for it right in america everything they're charging for everything now in fact we were reading and laughing about the fact that bmw wants to start charging people microtransactions to start using their heated seats so they're putting everything behind like a paywall right so you got to pay 18 dollars a month to use your heated seats in, in when I was in Jordan, it's a completely different, or it was back then, maybe it's changing now, but it was a different feel. You know, they offered you the coffee because you were a guest there, right? And I remember taking the coffee and having a drink, and it's a small cup. You know, it's not a big Arabic coffee cups are relatively small. So you take a couple sips and it's gone, you know, and you put it back. And the guy refilled it. And I took another couple sips and I drank the whole thing and then I put it back and the guy refilled it again. I looked at my dad and I'm like, what is going on here? You know, and he's over there laughing because there's a custom in Jordan where you actually are supposed to shake the cup whenever you give it back to him to tell him you're done. Right. So every time I'd hand it back to him, he'd refill it again. Um, but it was just that that level of connection. You know, they offered people coffee Usually with the coffee, they would offer you these dates. Now, dates are another note in this composition. And this is why it, it just instantly transported me back to our trip to Jordan. Because, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of the customs of the people, right? Of, of the food you ate. And while sometimes when I go to my parents' house, they have Arabic cookies and dates and stuff like that. It's not the same as when you're just immersed in the culture the coffee, the dates. Now I do have some fragrances that have the note of date 
in them, and I've talked about some of them recently. One of them is this, John Varvatos, um, John Varvatos. I think it's just called John Varvatos, John Varvatos, or John Varvatos EDT, or whatever it is, from 2004. And uh, I think it's the first masculine from the house. But uh, you can see it's tamarind, tree leaves, sage, flowers, um, Mediterranean herbs, dates, black leather, essence. So that date note here, uh, while it is nice, it didn't transport me to the Middle East the way that Majalis did. And then there's another perfume that has the notes, a note of dates, if you're into this kind of thing. It's called... L'Enfant Terrible, The Terrible Child. And The Terrible Child is a fragrance from Javoy. And it's discontinued, unfortunately. I think this is one of the best sandalwood fragrances in the world. I love this house. I don't talk about them nearly as much as I should. L'Enfant Terrible, you, everything about this house is premium. Okay? But you don't pay $700 a bottle like Spirit of Dubai is asking. You pay $180. Oh, this is so good. This is one of the most creamy, beautiful sandalwoods you'll ever smell um, with cumin and dates. And the terrible child is a reference to cumin kind of running around and making a, you know, making a muck of things. Oh, it's so good, though. The sandalwood here is absolutely fantastic. If you can find this, I found this at a discounter for like $100 a year or two ago. Um, if you can find this still for the retail price or less, grab it. If you're a lover of fragrances like, um, there is a, um, I'm trying to think. There is a Serge Luton's fragrance and, um, let's see, Serge Luton's. Feminita Dubois. Sorry, that just couldn't come to me. Feminita Dubois. If you're a fan of Feminita Dubois, that woody, spicy cardamom and, you know, beeswax and stuff um, with that fruity plum and then the uh, woody dry down, the sandalwood here is kind of the way that kind of that cedar slash sandalwood thing you get in Feminita Dubois but you get um, the note of dates as well. So I just wanted to show you those two, the John Varvatos and the Javoy fragrance, because if you're a fan of dates, you know, those two are fragrances you could maybe try to hunt down. But here in Majalis, the reason that I am just so in love with this fragrance is while, you know, the, the date note on those is done very well, L'Enfant Terrible is more about the sandalwood to me. John Barbados is kind of about some other things with a little bit of dates thrown in, but it doesn't remind me of the Middle East in a way. Even though there's oud and dates and stuff like that, this just instantly transported me back to our trip to the Middle East. Um, and, you know, it, um, it... It's... You notice what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the notes as much as the feeling that the fragrance gives me. And that is the sign of a fantastic fragrance, when it can transport you somewhere. Because fragrance is art, and people react differently to art, basically. You know, you and I could be staring at the same um, painting, and we could come to two completely different conclusions. And that's perfectly fine. Art is subjective. Uh, but outside of that coffee note, which, by the way... Again, I've talked about other coffee fragrances I love, like Trussardi Inside Man. There's no sweetness in. That's my favorite kind of fragrance. No sweetness. This has a little bit of sweetness to it, um, but it's not so much that it's going to throw me off track. It doesn't ever make me go, oh, that's way too syrupy sweet. They did a fantastic job of balancing the heavier oriental notes um, because there is myrrh. You can definitely pick out the myrrh here. And it's beautiful, but it's blended with things like the saffron, the honey, the coffee, and, of course, that lemony taif rose, which is so precious. I love taif rose. It's actually one of my favorite roses 
um, the Taif Rose. I absolutely love it. Um, and, you know, the brand, when you read the little breakdown, they talk about magic carpets. They almost reference Aladdin and A Thousand and One Nights. Uh, Scheherazade telling her husband, the Sultan, the stories every night for A Thousand and One Nights, right? Uh, Arabian Nights, that kind of thing. They, get it, they try to give you that vibe, but to me, um, it's, it's about my time in the Middle East and the time that uh, I spent there that really brings this fragrance home. I don't know if, if I didn't have that connection, if I would love this as much as I instantly did. Um, you know, and, and there's so many stories of how things are done over there, uh, in the Middle East versus in America that, you know, for someone like me, that's an American, I was born an American when I saw stuff like, you know, my, my, um, my, my aunts, my father's sisters would spend all day cooking. You know, we, we'd wake up, we'd have breakfast. They would spend all day cooking, making Wajidiwali, you know, grape leaves, or mensaf is the national dish in in Jordan. Um, lamb and rice and jamid and, um, you know, pine nuts. And they would spend all day cooking and then the men would eat. They would wait. The men would eat. And I always found that very strange being an American. You know what I mean? Like, why aren't we all sitting down and eating? It was just the custom. It was different over there. Whenever somebody walked into their house, a relative or a friend, the, everyone would get up and they would greet each other by kissing each other on the cheek. You know, both sides, right? And even the men did it, which in America, men would think that's very strange if a man walks into your house to kiss them on both cheeks, right? But it's a custom. It's a different custom. And there's something about the closeness of that. You know, when, when someone walks in, you say hi, and then you look back down at your phone, it's much different than greeting them, kissing them on the cheek, pouring coffee for them, welcoming them into your home in that kind of sense. It's a different feeling for me. And this captures that feeling. That's the best way that I can describe it. Now, after you've had dinner, right, in the Middle East, the men will usually either pull out their cigarettes or their cigars, or most likely they'll pull out their hookahs, right? They're algire, or whatever they call it. I call it hookah because it's hookah to me, but they call it something else. Um, they'll pull out their hookahs and they'll smoke the hookah tobacco. And usually that tobacco is flavored somehow, right? And in the dry down of this fragrance, imagine you've had the Arabic coffee, you've had the dates, right? You've had the dessert. Um, and you have had a wonderful Arabic dinner, and then it's the evening time, and they pull out the hookah, and they start smoking, and they kind of relax, and you get a little bit of that pipe tobacco. You know, some people say that Frederick Mall's The Moon has a little bit of that raspberry hookah-like vibe in the dry down when you spray, mixed with the oud. And this has a little bit of that as well. A little bit um, but you know it does things just a, just a little bit differently than the moon but you'll notice that as it begins to dry you will get some of that hookah vibe okay you maybe will get like an apple hookah vibe um, it 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 um, it just has that feel it just captures the it captures the imagination as far as going through the whole ritual, the whole routine of being in the Middle East. Now, I'm sure people in Kuwait, people in Iraq, people in Lebanon, people in Israel, people in Saudi Arabia, they do things differently, I'm sure. I'm sure the rituals I'm talking about in Jordan are different from other countries in the Middle East, but I've never been there. And I can't relate, you know, if there are differences um, but when you, when you have that, when you have that archetype in your head, you know, an archetype is something that kind of repeats generation after generation after generation, right? And, you know, humans a hundred years from today will probably know what it is just like a thousand, just like hundred years before. 
they know what an archetype is, right? An archetype of the Middle East, you think about that Persian rug that's laid out that you kind of sit on, or, you know, you think about the Arabic coffee or the hookah or all of these different things, the customs, and that's what this fragrance encapsulates to me. And so while the smell I think is fantastic and I think it's much higher quality than the other compositions that were uh, a little bit less than this, as far as full bottle purchase, none of those were full bottle purchases to me. Even the Oud, like I said, probably not a full bottle purchase. I will buy a bottle of this. This, this is the one for me, this and the Oud, if I can find full bottles of both, I think I would do it. Um, but I still want to test number two. I still want to test the, um, I still want to test the collection number two that they put out with Boz and all those other ones that are even more expensive, unbelievably more expensive. But, um, from the first collection, I was very tough on some of those other creations, extremely tough. And I said some, you know, harsh things. People who love the brand said things like, well, maybe this house just isn't for you, that kind of stuff. There you go. There you go. That's why, that's why I want to do these first impression videos because I want to share what's going through my head. And, you know, that kind of initial impression, this is the first time I've ever smelled it. I never wore this to bed. I sprayed it today. I was worried the atomizer wouldn't spray because two of the other ones... Uh, the atomizer will not spray. You know, I've run into a little bit of an issue with these samples. But this one, you know, that's that's why I do these first impression videos, to share the, the thoughts that kind of hit you instantly. And this just, you know, transported me back like a time machine to the Middle East. Um, you know, the smell, the greetings, the customs. Um, it, it it's It's amazing. I'm loving every second of wearing this today. Maybe I'm in a unique experience um, because of my background and my personal history and my connection to the Middle East. But if you're somebody that wants to smell um, a perfume that perfectly encapsulates what I think the Middle East stands for, it's Majalis. The Oud is great, but the Oud is just an Oud. I mean, I would tell you you could buy Frederick Malls Oud, you could buy, uh, you know... Bortnikoff's oud, you could buy any of these different ouds, and you're getting a you're getting usually a quality oud fragrance, right? But the oud uh, doesn't capture the different facets in the of the Middle East in the same way that Majalis does. That's my opinion. Uh, in my limited experience over there, right? Majalis captures it absolutely perfectly. They hit a total home run with this one, and. Um, if you see a bottle of this in my collection at some point in the future, uh, you will know why. This would be a this would be a perfect example of testing something, trying something, realizing what it was, and then going out and buying a bottle. I'll keep my eyes peeled, but as you guys know, I can be a very patient person, and I am in a no buy July right now, so I'm not buying any fragrances for the month of July. But once the no buy July is over. And, you know, once I can buy again, this is one that's going on the watch list. And I will just wait. I'll patiently wait until it falls into my lap at a price that either uh, I think is fair or I'll try to buy a decant or something like that. Although I would love that bottle. Uh, the bottle with the carpet on the front seems absolutely stunning. So this was 2016, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. 2016 is the release date. And this is so good. I mean, as far as spicy orientals in the Middle Eastern, um, you know, context go, this is one of the best. Uh, absolutely stunning stuff. If you if you get, if you have ever smelled Mijalis, um, Mijalis, everyone always corrects my English. It's it is what it is, man. You know, I'm a Texan at heart. I've been here since I was three, so um, you know, I. Uh, it, it's just part of being a Texan. My accent's going to be a little bit crazy. But if anyone has tried Majalis, uh, I would love to know your thoughts. I would love to know if that combo with the coffee, the Arabic-style coffee, which I've never smelled done this perfectly in a perfume before, and the dates, and, you know, the Taif Rose, 
really just brings you back to, you know, the Middle East like it does for me. Uh, if you uh, have any thoughts on this fragrance, I would love to hear them. A, um, you know, a like and a subscription, comments always are appreciated. Uh, it is, uh, I'm very grateful for the subscribers that I have uh, accumulated. Uh, and I'm grateful for all the feedback and the support and all that fantastic stuff. You know, Eugene just launched his fragrance and it just officially dropped. I can't wait to get my hands on that. But the support from the community, it reminded me of Eugene's fragrance because of the journey that he went through. Uh, and I was just thinking about, you know, the journey of him having a dream to have a perfume and then putting it out and just that portion of his life. And, you know, how we have supported each other in the fragrance community. It's just been a fantastic, it's such a great community, honestly. And it's one of the finest hobbies that I think you can have. You know, getting to know these scents has been a joy and a pleasure. And again, I have to thank my perfume godfather for sending these. You know, I wouldn't have ever been able to smell these without his kindness. So you know who you are, even though you want to remain anonymous. Thank you. I very much appreciate it. And um, you may have just found a full bottle for me. So thanks a lot, everybody. Cheers. Look forward to hearing, seeing your faces in the comments below. And I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye, guys.